Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, at this employer workshop this morning. I just would like to thank you all for attending. I'm really grateful for all of our speakers today. I think this is gonna be a really uh, important topic for everyone. And I just want to let you know that we will be hosting these monthly with different topics. So please keep an eye out. We're hoping to continue wow. to have these employer workshops every month. So I would like to introduce our commissioner of Department of Labor Licensing Consumer Affairs, Rosalie Drago. Good morning. Thank you, Diane. I want to thank our team in business services and our uh, team that helps with resources for people with disabilities, Tim Carew, on today. Um, so today we're going to be learning about uh, and hearing from people who have programs to hire individuals with disabilities. And I want to say that one of the things about Long Island is besides the fact that we have thousands of jobs open in careers with um, a ladder that has entry level opportunities that lead to good wages, family sustaining, sustaining wages, and um, really in a, a career that you can be proud of and feel good about. Um, most of what we do on Long Island is innovative. We are known for creating solutions, right? We put people on the moon. We're still working with NASA. We're still working with our Department of Defense. We're now on the forefront of uh, renewable energy and the first offshore wind turbines for the United States. So innovation is part of what we do. And we can only do that if we have a diversity of thought and capability in our workforce. So hiring people with disabilities is, uh, is a way, one of the many ways that we can diversify the workforce and diversify the ways people think about what we're doing and make sure that we have the most creative minds and then all the different approaches to solving problems. So today you'll hear from um, Winter Brothers, Christine will talk to us today. You'll also hear from employers that have had about their best practices that include Mark um, from Select, Long Island Select Healthcare, Fritz from Northwell Health, and uh, I believe we have we may have another uh, employer coming on board as well. So I appreciate all of you for coming to speak to our other businesses today, and we're looking forward to hear what you have to say. And uh, we'll just also let those that are on the Zoom and those that may be watching later know that our department helps to recruit individuals and train individuals for your job. So everything you learn here today, you can reach back out to Diane and her team and we'll find people um, and training to get people working for you. Turning it over to you, Christine. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Commissioner, and thank you to your team uh, for actually hosting these events. I think it's really helpful for um, us at the Winter Center for Autism to be able to share information about what our mission is, but also to meet employers after presentations like this. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for logging on. My name is Chris Ponzio, and I serve as the Executive Director of the Winter Center for Autism. I've been in the field of um, special education for more than 30 years, working predominantly with children, adolescents, and adults on the autism spectrum. I've also spent a good amount of time consulting in school districts, and most recently working with employers uh, in Suffolk County to really help uh, solve some of their workforce challenges, while also helping adults on the autism spectrum um, achieve their goals and dreams of having a sense of purpose and fulfillment through employment. So we can go to the next slide. So really, what is the Winter Center for Autism about? The center was founded um, at the end of 2019. It's a nonprofit, 501c3. And it was actually established by our founder, Joe Winters, who served as the chairman and CEO of Winters Brothers Waste Systems. Uh, Joe and his wife, Michelle, have a son, Sean, with autism, who's 27. And we're very blessed, as Joe told the story um, when we met a couple of years ago to talk about this opportunity, that uh, they spent four years visiting different um, programs for people with autism and realized that they wanted to give back in a big way 
um, investing millions of dollars into of, the, of their own finances because of their success in business to helping the autism community and realize that employment was the number one challenge for adults with autism. So Joe, his wife, Michelle, and the Winters Brothers family created the Winters Center for Autism, which is really committed to helping adults um, experience that quality of life and fulfillment that we all want, but doing that by creating job training, job creation and placement, and working, being the bridge uh, between the training aspect and working with employers so that they can really um, in, uh, onboard, recruit, train, uh, really a more neurodiverse um, population of people creating a more inclusive workforce. We can go to the next slide. Uh, and you can, you can go ahead, Michelle, why did we choose autism? So uh, what companies may not be aware of, um, and thank you, is autism, the prevalence of autism, one in 44 young people are diagnosed with autism and they grow up and they become adults in our community, our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, um, and an estimated 50,000 50, people with autism enter adulthood each year. So what does that mean as an employer? If you are watching this um, and you are struggling to fill positions within your company, um, the unemployment rate for adults with autism pre-pandemic was 85%. And the pandemic made that even more difficult, uh, reaching about 90%. So there's really a huge gap in services uh, for adults with autism. And part of the challenge is helping these talented people get into the workforce. So the unemployment rate in the US is about 10%. We have pretty staggering statistics. And how do we take some of our workforce challenges in our region um, and how do we help adults with autism be part of that solution? So you can go to the next slide, thank you. So our founder, Joe Winters, um, really talked about that his dream, and he tragically passed uh, last January um, at a very young age, but really was that in the next five years, all Long Island employers should have people with autism as part of their workforce. And why he said that was based on his experiences here at Winters Brothers Waste Systems to hire adults with autism. And I always like to clarify that prior to coming to work as, the, as part of the Winters Center for Autism, I thought it was Oh, of course, Joe Winters is starting this because, you know, and everyone's supportive because it's the boss's kid. His son, Sean, actually didn't work here for the first five years that the program started. So if you progress to the next slide, Michelle. So what happened back in 2016 is Winters Brothers worked with Nassau Suffolk Services for Autism, a provider of services for people with disabilities, to create two jobs for adults with autism. And there, at the time, Joe Winters was on the board of NSSA and really couldn't understand why people with autism were remaining unemployed uh, and how he wanted to help. So this gives you an idea over a period of time at Winters Brothers, um, how the program flourished and was able to help the company really become a better, more inclusive culture, but become more effective and efficient. And I share this graph with you because what, what really Winters Brothers realized is that they were able to hire people both into part-time and full-time positions and found that many people on the autism spectrum were some of their most reliable, dedicated, loyal people um, and employees. And what really that created was this sense of, um, we, call, we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but really focusing on neurodiversity and making sure that there were the right people in the right jobs and having those good matches. So what was the workplace success? What did that contribute? You know, how did that happen? So um, I can give you an example, a few examples of how Winters Brothers really took people's aptitude and their interest and found jobs in the company. Um, and some jobs existed and some jobs were actually uh, created or job carving happened. So 
Winters Brothers uh, works with a lot of schools and a lot of community entities. So they actually found a young man with autism who's a graphic uh, artist and he does all of their art and graphic design across their buildings as well as through all of their community publications. Uh, they are very much a paper heavy company. Um, if you wanna go back, Michelle, they're a paper heavy, heavy company and they do a lot of invoices, a lot of uh, billing, paper billing, uh, lots of paper, shredding, shredding, copying, filing. So a lot of business uh, clerical tasks that uh, when we think about our own businesses and we think about some of the last things to get done, it's sometimes those piles that really creep up. Um, having, uh, committing to their janitorial services really being provided by people on the autism spectrum who are always gonna come in, always do a really thorough job. And even during the, the uh, pandemic, these were young men and women who were coming in to work during the pandemic for the few people that were still, with the few people that were still working doing a lot of the sanitizing um, tasks. And then container painting. When you think about Winters Brothers, and I thought this before I came here, so I'm not biased, but there were, um, when, you, when you're out, you see that most of their trucks and containers are pretty pristine. And that's because they have a very dense schedule of um, painting and maintaining their products. So container painting was another task and waste collection. There are a couple of young men who are actually part of the recycle initiative, the green initiative that Winters Brothers started and companies throughout the West Babylon Industrial Park have participated in this and become new customers for the company. So it expanded their business while creating jobs for adults on the spectrum. One young man actually started a, um, a social enterprise within the company of snack and coffee delivery and raises a profit about five, of about $5,000 a year that he gives back to uh, local nonprofits, Winter Center for Autism and NSSA being two of them. So this is actually a quote um, from uh, Chris, one of the young men in the photo. And um, he talks really about, he started out doing clerical work. Uh, this was a young man who was in his twenties when he started. He started the snack cart um, that I talked about, but how great is this? You gotta show up, you have to be on point, you have to be a team player and keep your commitments. Other people depend on me to get the job done. Wouldn't we love if all of our employees felt that way and really took their jobs that seriously. Um, and really uh, with that level of, uh, of, of passion. I also share, if you'd like to go to the next slide, Michelle, um, I tend to skip ahead. So I'm just trying to use the slide. Uh, you can go again one more. So there are a lot of benefits to hiring people with autism. This isn't my opinion. This is actually what's been documented in the literature, what's been echoed by companies that hire um, and retain people on the autism spectrum. Part of the nature of autism, obviously everybody's individual and everybody's unique, but there's a lot of value um, for many of us, but we see it more prevalent in people on the spectrum with having a routine. So having lower absenteeism, because if my um, schedule, you know, if part of my day and my routine is to go to work, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, higher retention. So we're working with a number of Suffolk County businesses for, and actually starting with two more in the next month. Uh, and what we hear uh, from employers, which is, um, which is nice, is that generationally, uh, we're, we might be struggling as employers with um, young people who may be expecting to move up the corporate ladder very quickly compared to maybe 20 years ago. Many people on the autism spectrum find comfort in having a job and really mastering that job and keeping that job. It doesn't mean people don't wanna move up the ladder, but there are many people, especially in service-driven industries, Long Island is just so service dependent, um, that are looking to keep the job that they have. So you're not investing all of this training for somebody to leave to go to another company or maybe look to move up that corporate ladder. It also enhances the company culture. Uh, you'll see later in the slides that um, there's a, real sense of um, appreciation, and that's something else we've learned from our um, employer partners, a real sense of appreciation of having that diversity. And we've had situations, multiple, uh, where we've coached a particular department supervisor on maybe, um, you know, something that's come up with one of their employees on the spectrum. And one example that comes to mind is there's, um, uh, a full-time accountant 
who's on the spectrum and the company felt was um, probably not working as efficiently as they had hoped. And after meeting with the controller and talking about how they presented the task, we said, well, here's what we would suggest that you consider in terms of modifying that training. Well, what they realized is that they actually modified some of the training for other people in the department and the entire department got better and became more efficient because they were really clear on what their expectations were day by day when they should be finishing different processes of the, uh, the, the payment schedule for accounts payable. So we were really excited to, um, to get that feedback. And then it, it also attracts talent. One of the, um, I think the, the younger folks today get a little bit of a bad rap about, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, I don't want to say lack of loyalty, but a lot of job, job, job hopping and moving around. And what we see is that people, young people today really want to know what companies are doing as it relates to um, social responsibility and social justice. There's also tax credits available that I believe our friends from Department of Labor will talk about, and just the societal impact and, and how that really um, that really makes, makes a big difference. You can go to the next slide, Michelle. Thank you. So actually, Leslie from Accounts Payable, again, we talk about some of the things that pile up uh, in businesses and as audits just become more stringent in certain companies and um, looking at uh, filing and, and how that was always the last thing on her to-do list. And this young man took that upon as one of his jobs and all of those boxes, I could probably, if I could take you on a virtual tour, you'll see nothing is there. There's no longer this backup of, of um, months and months of filing to do. So these are some of the businesses. Um, you know, global and US based leaders in the workplace supporting um, adults with autism. And you'll see SAP, Autonomy Works, Microsoft, Home Depot has Ken's crew, um, Walgreens, Randy Lewis had a big influence on changing the culture at Walgreens, um, where his son on the spectrum now works. And really, for some of these companies, they may be targeting people who are very high functioning, who have um, really strong coding or analytical skills, very technology centered. And what we're doing um, and what we can help employers with at Winter Center for Autism goes even beyond um, really people who have that technological savvy, but people who are also looking to work in more um, entry level positions and service driven positions. You can, you can go to the next slide, Michelle, thanks. So here's just a business case that I think is important for employers to, uh, to take a look at. When you think about the number of people um, with disabilities that represent um, the third largest market in the US, uh, that's, that's, that's really I'm influential. I'm sorry? 92% of Americans uh, view companies hiring people with disabilities more favorably. All right, Madam, I'm in a meeting right now live. So I gotta give me give me a. I'm phone sorry. Number. I think somebody probably needs to mute. Um, Eighty-seven percent would prefer to give their business um, to companies that hire people with disabilities, and even five percent are willing to switch brands associated with good cause if um, the prices uh, were equal and um, if the if the price and quality were equal. So these are ways that as an employer, you can really not only help, um, but these are some of the, the ways you can help. You can create jobs. You can actually support the center, inspire change. But what I wanna take uh, a couple of minutes to talk about, because you may be wondering, well, how can you help me? Um, how can you help my workforce challenges? And I think the best way for us to do that is to have a conversation. And the reason I say that is the way our center will be, um, we have 18 young men and women who are working in the community, uh, in community employers currently. We will um, have our ribbon cutting ceremony at the Winter Center for Autism in West Babylon on June 15th. It's a 14,000 square foot job training center. And the job types that we'll be specifically training for are related to employers that we have linked with in the community. So for example, we're working with Long Island Hotels Marriott and doing very specific training for room attendants. 
for their hotels as well as laundering services and groundskeepers. We are also working with um, Mike's Custom Cuts for positions in um, salons, barber shops, uh, a lot of the positions that we see as uh, customers of service, we have to be patient. We are also working uh, with currently, you'll hear from Mark, uh, Long Island Select Healthcare. Um, we're working with the Bead Factory, uh, as well as Unita, International Trading, and Winters Brothers Waste Systems. And the reason I share that with you is that the diversity in the businesses that we've been able to partner with and the types of jobs um, that, that employers are looking to fill. We have a oh, more than 200 individuals that have reached out um, for assistance with job training and placement. So we're even doing some of those one-to-one -one connections um, and working with the Suffolk County Department of Labor to really connect people. And I think that's what it's about, to connect people, support people, and help employers to be successful in their recruitment, onboarding, uh, training, and retention. So you might not be sure. Uh, you might wonder, you know, this, this feels like unfamiliar territory, or perhaps you hired somebody on the spectrum, but you really didn't have the infrastructure in your HR department or in your department personnel. Don't overthink it, just do it. Um, we found that uh, a lot of the training um, that companies offer is exactly the type of training that people on the spectrum need. They may need it presented um, a little bit uh, uniquely. Uh, they may need a little bit more time, but that's why the Winter Center for Autism is here because if you invest that on the training aspect, what you get in retention far outweighs that. So we're excited to help you um, with some of your workforce solutions. And I, I hope to hear from you and I'd like to answer any questions that you may have at this point. Or we can save questions for the end. I'm not sure what you prefer. I don't see any questions at this time in the chat, but if okay. anyone has any, I will definitely relay them. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Moore. I'm the Director of Human Resources with Long Island Select Healthcare, and I'm, I'm proud to say that uh, we were one of the first uh, employment partners uh, that uh, worked with Christine and her team uh, at uh, Winters Brothers Center for Autism. Just to provide you with a little bit of information with regards to our organization, uh, Long Island Select Healthcare is a, a federally qualified health center. Uh, we provide 20 different services like primary medical care and specialty medical care, behavioral health, dental, uh, as well as rehabilitative services to over 7,000 patients in Suffolk County. We operate in three locations in Riverhead, Central Islip, and Hop Hog. And just a little bit of background um, to um, help everybody understand why we partnered with Winter Center. Um, we were actually created by three human service agencies that service the intellectually delayed and developmentally disabled population. And approximately 50% of our patients have a diagnosis of an intellectual delay or developmental disability. So it was really a natural connection uh, for us to begin working with Winter Center for Autism. And um, currently, uh, we're really proud of two programs that we work on. Uh, one of them is an employment program, and the other is a training program. Uh, the employment program consists of presently one employee, Mikey, uh, Mikey works in our central Islip location, and he works two days a week for a total of three hours every week. Um, however, we're really excited because we're going to be expanding uh, this program uh, in uh, this quarter by an additional four individuals um, and expanding it to a second location. Uh, the training program runs parallel to the employment program. And it involves individuals who are accompanied by a coach 
coming to one of our locations and they're learning skills that will help them uh, do work for us or do work elsewhere for other employers like time management, responsibility, communication, critical thinking, focus, creativity. These are all very important skills. Um, and individuals, both through the employment and the training program, have been working on tasks that we have thought of as an organization, but have worked very closely with Winter Center uh, to make sure that the program is as successful as it can possibly be. So to give you an idea of some of the things that uh, individuals are working on, uh, it includes uh, scanning, shredding, cleaning, um, they're creating ID badges for employees uh, as we hire new individuals, um, as well as uh, being involved with an employee recognition program that I'd like to give you a little bit more information on. We have some tremendously creative individuals who uh, are working through the training program, and they wanted to help our organization uh, recognize the nurses that work here at Long Island Select Healthcare because it's Nursing Appreciation Week. So their project entailed distributing a five question questionnaire uh, to everybody within the organization. And those questions pertain to Nursing Appreciation Week. So how do you as an individual interact with a nurse? Why do you appreciate them? Things like that. Um, and what they did was then contacted each individual who was interested in answering those questions and actually interviewed them um, while also videotaping them. They're going to be producing this video and posting it on a, uh, an internal social media platform that we use uh, to really show not only the nurses how much we appreciate them, but everybody else uh, the creativity that's involved uh, with those individuals that are working with us. Uh, to give you another uh, good example, we have a food pantry at one of our locations. Um, Winter Center for Autism Individuals uh, took the initiative uh, to take a complete inventory uh, and computerize this uh, food pantry. Uh, for our organization, which uh, helped us tremendously. Uh, they also organized um, the inventory, which helped uh, those individuals who were running that food pantry. So this partnership has been uh, tremendously mutually beneficial, uh, not only to the individuals who have come to us through Winter Center for Autism, um, but also for all of us at Long Island Select Healthcare because these individuals have been reliable, they've been flexible, and have really been a wonderful addition to the staff um, through both the training and the employment program. Um, all of the individuals, regardless of whether they're working for us as a direct employee uh, or here through the training program, are viewed as coworkers, um, and the journey to get to where we are today was really not difficult. Um, and it really just started with that first step of having that discussion, as Christine described, um, and really just a willingness to look at things through a different lens. Um, I cannot stress enough, you know, when I talk to any company, and I'm happy to speak to anybody who's here on this webinar, uh, that might be considering um, this type of program, that the rewards are just exponential, not just to those within the organization, but those who are participating, who might be on the spectrum. Um, and just to close, you know, scientific studies show that doing good uh, decreases stress. It makes us feel good, uh, makes people happy at work. Uh, and it motivates people to do good again. So please consider, you know, reaching out to Christine or myself. I will send my contact information in the chat box. If anybody's interested in reaching out and finding out more about how the program worked for Long Island Select Healthcare, I'd be happy to speak to you. Thank you so much. And I think I'm going to be passing this over to 
Fritz Gerald at Northwell Health. Just before you pass it on, Mark, we do have a question. Um, sure. Are job coaches being utilized in all these employment models? And if so, who's providing these coaching services? Great question. Uh, yes, job coaches do accompany uh, the individuals that are participating with, uh, with our organization, LISH. And those job coaches are being provided by Winter Center. Uh, so they accompany Mikey and the rest of the team that comes to Hop Hog um, and uh, help those individuals. Thank you. And then Chris, we actually have a question for you as well. What do you find is the most common reservation spoken or unspoken from employers about giving people a chance with autism? And how have you addressed that and practical, what practical support is available for people with autism as they transition into a role? So I wouldn't say that there's one particular reservation outside of an employer, um, and, so, and oftentimes it's working with human resources, uh, being, being concerned that they don't have uh, enough knowledge or experience or essentially are worried about doing something wrong. They're very um, interested in people being successful. So um, some of the practical solutions to that are we actually will offer companies some pre-service training. I can remember meeting Mark um, at Lish in a conference room with a team of people from Long Island Select Healthcare to give them the opportunity to ask the questions in advance of actually um, doing the job training or the employment program. So uh, oftentimes it's that open dialogue and that's the piece that we really feel strongly about at Winter Center for Autism where we remain that link with the employer so that if there is um, some uncertainty, they do have the ability to have that expertise to really guide them through whatever they may feel they need some assistance with. Thank you. Sure. All right, I think I'm up. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All right, great. Thank you, Mark. So, uh, oh, thank you. Yep. So, uh, my name is Fritz Gerald. I'm, uh, I'm a shard, but everybody just calls me Fritz. I'm currently a, di a director of ops um, in the Department of Medicine at North Shore University Hospital. Um, and, you know, just to give you a little bit of background about the organization, Nova Health is the largest private employer in New York State. I think we have close to about 80,000 employees now. Our geography spans um, Westchester all, all, all the way to the east end of Long Island. So we're fairly large. We have, we have, we have a large footprint. We have a lot of jobs open and available. And uh, we do have a lot of programs that support individuals who have disabilities and, and autism. I know we have um, employee business resource groups. We have a specific group within there called the Enable Bird that allows that is a environment that allows um, and the individuals who have a disability to connect, um, learn, you know, each other's struggles and challenges and, and how to fight through that. We offer internship opportunities to individuals with disabilities too, to allow them to get on the job training, you know, see what the skill sets best um, work for them. And, you know, today I, I wanted to have a little bit of a different presentation because I am someone that I guess you could say uh, uh, um, identifies as someone with a disability. I do speak with a stutter um, and it has early on in life impacted my, um, ability to go after things and, and do things and I've shied away but as you can see here on, on the screen I've been able to um, kind of find my path and 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 and, and, um, and succeed and no for health um, has been a place that for me has been an environment that has been supportive and encouraging and e even though I still have my own internal challenges and and, um, and, and things when I stutter I feel bad about it, but I will say that being at Norfolk, it has allowed me to grow at my own pace, um, to, uh, it stretched me, but grow at my own pace and allowed me to um, feel comfortable with 
having a stutter and being able to still do my job and, and not let that impact me at all. I, I truly feel that because I work here at Norfolk Health, I've been able to navigate. As you see, I started as a, a valet. Um, I, you know, I have to speak with a lot of clients or, or people coming in to get the cars parked from patients, but also have to interface with folks within the hospital too. As a result of that, I've been able to build relationships, which led to my next position in patient relations, where I worked at the front desk. Again, having to speak a lot to patients and the physicians and the doctors and nurses and the clinical teams. Um, but all throughout that time, I went to a school, which in Norfolk, of course, supported as, as well. I, I was able to, to get an MBA during that time span, which then allowed me to join the administrative fellowship program, which um, exposed me to a lot of the senior leadership team here. Um, and they were all great. You know, what I found is that for the most part, people are supportive. Um, and, and that's a great, great thing. And that's why, you know, to Christine, to, to your point, you spoke about a lot, 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 lot of folks in my generation like to change jobs a lot. They're not as loyal, but for me, um, I always said I'll sacrifice a higher income to stay at Norfolk because they've been able, able to support me. Um, and as you see, I, I, I worked in HR for a little bit as a project manager. I served as the chief, chief of staff to our um, CHRO uh, for two years as well, became an executive program director. Now I'm in a position where I, I lead groups, have to speak, have to do presentations. And me being here and now being able to speak to everyone on this on, on this call, I, I, I would say I, I was not always able to do this, but because of know for Health and exposure that I, I received and the support and the encouragement, this is what allows me to be here today and speak with you all on this call. Um, so I'm happy to um, answer any questions. I'm happy to connect you all with whoever um, um, within you know, for Health in terms of offering opportunities for individuals with disabilities. I have plenty of contacts here. So um, I'll include my contact info in the, in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, thank you. I think I'm gonna turn it over to Tim, right? Yes, okay. there's no questions in the chat. So Tim. Thank you, that. Chris Gerald. My name's Tim Carew. I work with Suffolk County Department of Labor. I'm a disability resource coordinator, and I'm here to speak about uh, some of the services that are available here. Uh, so one of the things that we do is we work with people with disabilities. We try to we require to actually make sure our one-stop employment centers, career centers, or American job centers are accessible to everyone. And that's an annual audit that's done. We also work with people with disability as a resource coordinator to find them locations for training. Since we are not rehab counselors, we're job coaches. Uh, we can refer them to other organizations to help them. We also find employment for people. And um, we also tell businesses, and that's what I really want to talk about today, about the resources that are available. Uh, this uh, tax incentives. There's the federal work opportunity tax credit, and that gives up to about $2,400 of the first six thousand dollars in wages but you have to notify the department of labor within 28 days when you started doing that but it's a great resource to incentivize yourselves to actually consider giving someone a chance or hiring someone with a disability after the first year since, since the work opportunity tax credit is only for one year the new york state workers with disabilities employment tax credit kicks in and that you have to be engaged with either access vr that's new york state Adult Career and Continuing Education Services Rehab, and they either be engaged with them or be engaged with uh, uh, the Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired. In addition to that, there's a tax incentive that tax incentive for work employees, workers with a, a disability tax credit, people with developmental disabilities also are eligible. The, these are all the employers. Um, there's also things for accessibility. There's a disabled access credit tax credit. And that's a certain dollar amount your company has to have in the size. It has to be below a certain dollar amount. Where well, you can make uh, uh, corrections to your building, architectural, communication, transportation, modifications, modifications, equipment, and use of interpreters, tape text, and alternate formats for communication. Uh, there's also a barrier removal tax deduction. Businesses of any size can take an annual deduction of $15,000 
for expenses relating to removing physical, structural, and transportation barriers for people with disabilities. On average, it's about for someone with disability doing accommodation, what we call reasonable accommodation, like in the office, it's usually at the most up to about like two thousand um, dollars. There's also another incentive that people don't know about, and that's the New York State Federal Bonding Program. Uh, people would think it's for justice involved. It is not. It's uh, New York State administers the federal bonding program, and people with disabilities would come in the category of having been long-term unemployed. So if you have them in, a, in an area where there's money or there's a need for bonding, uh, people with disabilities, some drive trucks, and sometimes they have to be bonded for that. So that's a good thing, or they're by handling money. They have to be bonded for that. So the first $5,000, the state would do that. After that, you, they have to request more information and it can go up to maybe $20,000 a year. So that's a good incentive. And the third one is from the New York State Education Department, which is Access VR. That's Adult Career and Continuing Educational Services Vocation Rehab. They have something known as Work Tryout Program. The person has to be engaged with Access VR. And in Work Tryout, they can actually pay the employer for up to three months of salary that person while they're trying out the job. And so that's a good incentive for some employee to give it, give someone a chance and an opportunity to show what they really can do and, and do the right thing. But we also have the Department of Labor and also Access VR. We have on-the-job training. So there's many employer incentives that are there for employers if, if they want to try out hiring somebody. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions. Uh, actually, someone does want a list of the incentives that can be offered. I'll, I'll give you their email afterwards. Okay. I don't see any questions, but I do see a lot of people connecting in the chat, which is great. That's good. All right. And yeah, I see. So I'm done. I don't know if anyone else wants to conclude or it's almost. Rosalie or Christine, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to say? I would absolutely love to jump in. Thank you to those of you who reached out in the chat. Um, I know that I've shared my contact information as has Mark and Fritz Gerald. So please feel free uh, to reach out to us um, if we can help answer your questions. Fitzgerald, I just want to thank you because I think your perspective is so helpful and um, really uh, refreshing to hear about your success. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, thank you. And I, um, I really welcome the opportunity to meet uh, many of you or have a conversation and appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for everyone who joined us this morning. Uh, Chris, Mark, Fitzgerald, and Tim, thank you so much for all the information. And uh, I will be emailing you uh, some of this presentation so that you have more information at hand. So have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much.